how to prevent muscle strains when you are starting to exercise. Now, it's really important that when you get back to exercising after a long period of injury or rest or just not being able to exercise as much as you normally would, it's very important that we can go on this upward trajectory to ensure that we're not breaking down the muscles again and it's gonna put you out for a number of months. With exercise, often when we get back on the bandwagon, we think, you know, let's get back into it, set the alarm nice and early, go out for a nice morning walk, walk or a jog or some sort of floor-based exercise at home, we start those exercises and then we twing a hamstring or pull a calf or we damage our shoulder and then we're out for another two months and it takes us another two months after that to actually get built back up again. So I'm going to show you today exactly some of the things that I use with our clients every single day to help them prep for exercise to ensure we have that consistency over a long period of time, getting them to the end goal of getting them fitter, getting them more active and healthier long term. I'm Dr. Jeremy Andrews, doctor of chiropractic here at West Chiropractic in Surrey. So why exercise? Well, we all know exercise is good for us, but it's not the exercise that we actually want. It's the feeling or the effect of the exercise that is, that is what we're after. So what I mean by that is we don't exercise because we love the feeling of exercise, and some of us do, but we love the after effect. We love the uh, clarity that it gives us. We love the dopamine hit that it gives us. It makes us feel good. We also like being outdoors if you do an outdoor based exercise, but we also love the fact that it keeps us active. It keeps us mobile and it keeps us healthy long term. The study suggests that the more that we exercise, even if it's just a single walk or you know 10,000 steps per day, that our bodies are going to be healthier in the long run. It helps our respiratory health, it helps our cardiovascular health, which is going to make sure that our organs are vital and they're staying healthy for the long run. Okay, so let me show you some of the things that I would use every single time before I go out for exercise. Now, my exercise might be different than yours. You might be doing something much more intense than I'm doing. I'm just thinking about going out out for a brisk walk or maybe even a light jog first thing in the morning to get my blood pumping around my body and my cardiovascular health and my respiratory health. So let me show you a couple of things that I'll start with. First one is we want to get the hamstrings prepped. So the hamstrings they go from the buttock all the way into the base of the knee and it's really important that we use these effectively in order to get our pelvis in a good position and also help with our core supports. The hamstrings what they do is they flex the knee. So what I mean by that is they bring the heel back up. So the hamstring its job is to do this movement here okay so that contracts you can feel it like this and that's to, uh, the aim is to bring their foot up like that so when you're in that that phase where you're walking like this if this is my this is my leading leg here as soon as I'm in that position there my hamstring is starting to work I'm pushing back so as soon as I'm in flex position there that's my hamstring working as soon as I'm pushing back that's more of my the front of my leg working there okay so it's really important we go through that phase there the hamstring is controlled it's going to help give you a lot of stability to the knee and it's also going to make sure that we're running or we're walking through that phase nicely. How do we get the hamstring prepped? So I love this one. It's very simple. You can do this just standing like this. So very simply, just taking one foot forward, keeping this leg nice and straight. Careful not to lock the knee, just the knee slightly bent and you're just going to lean forwards like this. Okay. So making sure that back is flat. Okay. I don't want to be like this the whole time. I want to make sure that back is nice and flat. I'm just leaning into the hamstring like this. Now, if you've got this problem, this probably isn't gonna be the best one for you. I'm gonna show you something different in a second. Just take it nice and slowly like this. What you can also do is you can also rotate the foot in the inside, in the outside. That's gonna give you more stability around that area as well. Okay, show you from the front as well. Just like this. Leaning in, roll the foot out to the side. Roll the foot all the way in like this. Okay, it's gonna be really, really nice stretch through the hamstring there, prevent any muscle tears in the hamstring. So it's gonna go all the way down the back of the leg as well, help with your calves also. Okay, so just like this, bending forward. So this leg here, this is the involved leg, okay? Letting that rotate through. Okay, so the other muscle we wanna work on is the quad. Now the quad is at the front of the leg here. So if the hamstring's at the back of the leg, the quad is at the front of the leg. So what the quad does, is it does this movement here and it extends the leg, extends the leg. So kicking movement, yeah? Footballers have nice big quads because they're doing a lot of kicking, doing a lot of running. So in that walking phase where we're putting our foot down, leg gets raised, the leg gets, sorry, <laughs> leg gets raised up like this. We put the foot down, the glute then starts to activate and the quad will extend the knee like this. So we're straightening the leg, that push off phase, that's when the quad's gonna be at its most active. So if we're going for a run or going for a walk, we really need to make sure that's working at its best, working at its optimal position. So how do we stretch the quad? So I like to hold onto a chair and I like to just pull my heel up like this. I'm gonna step back in a minute so you can see. 
and I also like to push my hip forwards as well, okay? So let me show you from the side here. I'm always gonna hold on to something, always make sure you hold on to something. So I've got my leg like this, and I'm really trying to push that hip forward. Now, a common mistake would be to do this, this movement, so you arch your back. We don't wanna do that. Keep your back nice and upright, and you're really trying to, you see my pelvis goes forwards like this. You're really trying to get that maximum stretch through the quad, and it's also gonna stretch the front of the hip flexor here as well, which again is a, is a really key muscle. And also you can rotate the leg, rotate the leg. Let me show you from this side here. So like this, pushing that hip forwards, rotate the leg, rotate the leg in. Quad obviously stands for, for, for four. So you've got four quadriceps muscles on the front and they all run at different angles through the leg, which is why I'm rotating my hip around. So I'm getting different parts of the front of the leg here. You can hold this for 30 seconds, repeat on both sides, try and repeat three times three. Okay, so like this. So not doing this movement here, I'm arching my back. I'm literally keeping my knees straight, but I'm pushing the, see that there? Pushing the hip forwards like that to get maximum stress on there. Try and pull your heel into your bum. If it causes any problems on the knee, just stop. Causing any problems on the hip, please stop as well. And then send me a, a message and I'll be able to help you. Okay, so we've done hamstring, we've done quad. So the final exercise we're gonna talk about today is the calf. And the calf is really, really important. It's a small muscle that's gonna go into that push-off phase as well and help lift us up off the floor. If we are going for a run, the calves tend to get very, very tight. I myself suffer with a lot of calf problems, particularly when I'm running. I need to make sure that I'm stretching my calves out the best way that I can. So there's two ways I like to stretch them. So firstly is on the floor. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that now. Okay, so I go onto all fours like this and I'm in a sort of downward dog position like this. And all I do is I simply just pedal the calves backwards and forwards. If it's too much pressure on your shoulder or your wrist, or you're getting dizzy, then just stop. And you're just taking pressure off the calves like that. Let me show you from the other side. So just pedaling. And again, you can rotate your foot through. That's going to really take a lot of pressure off the calf as well. Just making sure we're stretching out those calves before we go into activity. It's going to take a lot of pressure off. Step up nice and gently. And obviously just squat, gently come up like this. So very simply like this, one goes back. Okay, so this is the bonus one for the hamstring. So just when you're lying on your back, you wanna let the leg come all the way up like this and just let it come up like that as much as you can. Keep your head nice and flat. You may only be able to come up to here, that's fine, but bringing the leg all the way up like this is gonna stretch the back of the hamstring. If you're suffering with a back issue, this is one of the best ways to do it because it keeps the core nice and flat. Okay, so there we have it. Those are my top three muscles that I like to stretch before going into activity to prevent muscle strains and spasms. If you like the video, please hit the like button and share this with any friends or family that are suffering with recurrent muscle strains. As always, you can grab copies of my best-selling books here, The Secret Cure to Back Pain, How to Avoid a Lifetime of Painkillers and Surgery, and then Transform Your Back as well. There's a link in the show notes below. We'll see you next time. Thank you.